We have been adopted. We have every right to cry, Abba, Father. And since we are children, and that is a reality, that is a fulfilled condition, we are then heirs. We are heirs. Galatians 3.26 says, You are all sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You're not a son of God by being born into the world. You're a son of God and an heir by faith in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3.26. And if you are a son and a child of God, you are then an heir. You are then an heir also. Now, remember Roman adoption laws. An adopted child was not inferior to a naturally born child, born child into the family. In fact, adopted children were often adopted because the parents wanted a superior child to the ones they had. So when somebody chose to adopt a child, it was because they wanted to select that child purposely for the future benefit and welfare of the family, and that child would have all rights to inheritance equal to the naturally born children into that family. The fact was that adopted child was at least equal and in many cases viewed to be superior to the other children. In um, Jewish tradition, uh, the inheritance went double portion to the oldest child. If uh, there were two sons, the oldest would get two-thirds and the youngest would get one-third. The, the oldest son got a double portion of the inheritance. That is not the case in Roman law. Nothing in Roman history indicates that to us. What we have in Roman law that we can still find is that all sons were given the same inheritance. There was an equal level of inheritance in the Roman system, and that was for adopted children as well. That was the law. Whether or not they followed it all the time obviously could be debated. So Paul is using the Roman custom in his analogy here, and what he is saying is that under Roman law, all who are sons, uh, under the analogy of Roman law, all who are sons of God are equal heirs, all equal heirs, if sons or since children, sons, heirs also. And by the way, according to Roman law, something received by inheritance was more secure than what might be owned by purchase. If you receive something by inheritance, that was the most secure possession you could ever possibly have. And that is what Paul is saying. We are, as the children of God, equally given the inheritance. And it is more secure than anything we could gain for ourselves. In fact, anything we gain for ourselves, we'll leave here, right? Since sons, therefore heirs. To help you with that a little bit, Galatians 4 uh, is a good passage, and I'll just begin reading in verse 4. And you heard this earlier in the service. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that He might redeem those who were under the law. And what's this redemption about? That we might receive the adoption as sons. In other words, that's what salvation is for, to bring us into the family, to adopt us as sons gives us all the rights, and then to regenerate us as sons gives us the nature, and then we can be conformed to the family resemblance for which Christ is the model. And as a result of the adoption of sons, God sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer a slave but a son, listen to this, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the fact of our inheritance. This is the fact of our inheritance. That fact is further expressed in the magnificent words of 1 Peter 1, and these you don't want to miss, 1 Peter 1. And this again is a benediction, uh, praise to God, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, God is the God who is the Father of Christ, that is, their essence is the same, they're one in nature, the deity of Christ being emphasized. Who according to His great mercy, all of this is mercy, all of this is grace, has caused us to be born again. We're adopted in Galatians, we're born again. That talks about both our rights and our nature. To a living hope. We literally have been saved 
into a living hope. 